When it comes to enums in different programming languages, we seem to have the ability as programmers to be able to access something that looks like both a string and an integer at the same time. And depending on the context that you're using it, you get either that numeric value or that string representation. So enums can be really handy for us as programmers because it can make our code a lot more readable. If you watched my previous video on enums, we looked at some of the basics of how we can define them and how their values are initialized. So if you haven't checked that out yet, you can go ahead and watch that right here and then come right back to this one to look at some additional examples. What we observed in the last video is that we can cast an integer value to the enum type, but but we can't cast a string to the enum type. And that's a little bit weird because the enum seems to represent both a string and an integer. So why does one work, but the other doesn't? And what can we do about that? So in this video, we're going to look at how we can take a string and go to that enum value to be able to work with that in code. And before I jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. It's totally free and every week you'll get software engineering topics as well as .NET focused articles. I try to include exclusive early access to YouTube videos so you can check these out before they're released to the public as well as some dedicated articles that only newsletter subscribers see. You'll get a content recap for the week as well as some things like programming exercises and little tidbits for you to play with. So check that out. I'll have a link for it in the comments below. And with that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and see how we can go from strings to enum values very easily. All right, so the enum type that we're going to be working with is the same from the last video. I've just created a day of the week enum, and we have the values Monday through Sunday declared for this enum type. And like I said in the intro to this video, what we observed is that we cannot take a string and cast it to be this enum type. So if we had the string Monday, we could not just put in front of it parentheses with day of the week and do casting to get a variable assigned to this enum type. And that's a little bit unfortunate because it does work with the numeric type, but not with strings. So what can we do instead? All right, so the examples we're going to be looking through are this enum static class that we have to work with and the try parse methods that are available there. I wanted to call out for this video, I'm only going to be looking at try parse, but there are normal parse variations instead. And this is a common practice with some of the .NET types where there is a parse or some other method and then a try variation. And the difference between these implementations is that in the normal variation, which is just parse, if it fails, it will throw an exception. But the signature of the method is changed such that the return type is the day of the week if it succeeds. And like I mentioned, if it fails, it will throw an exception. The try parse variation we're going to be looking at behaves the same way, but the structure of the method call is a little bit different. So instead of throwing exceptions, which will be a little bit more convenient for us in this video, what we're going to have is a true or false return type. So I'm going to be assigning that in this first example to did parse one. And then the output parameter is actually on the method signature itself. So we get try parse one being output. And if it's successful, we'll get an enum value in there. If it fails, it will be the default value of the enum. So I just wanted to call out that we're not looking at parse, but it will behave the exact same way. It's just that parse will throw exceptions when something does not work, and try parse simply has a false instead of true when something does not parse properly. So the first example that we're going to look at is try parse with a single input parameter, which is just the day of the week that we want to parse, and then an output parameter, which is what the result will be if it succeeds. Now, there are a couple of other flavors of this, and we're gonna see those in example two and three here. What we have is this ability to ignore the case or not. So if we wanted to ensure that we're only dealing with case sensitive parsing, we can toggle this to be true or false, depending on what we need. And just to illustrate that, I'm going to show you the two different flavors where it is true and when it is false for whether or not we should ignore the case. So you can see on this example here, I have Tuesday and it's all lowercase. And then I'm saying that we should ignore the case when we go to parse it. So I suspect that when we go to run this, Tuesday all lowercase will work properly. Similarly, when we're saying that we should not ignore the case and Friday is the proper casing that we'd expect, this should also parse successfully. But what about example one up here? The default where there is no ignore case specified. What's the default behavior of this API if we try to parse and it's all lowercase and we have not been able to indicate 
ignore case or not. Let's run this and find out. All right, so here is the output from our program, and we have some interesting results. For the first example, we passed in an all lowercase Wednesday and then asked the enum class to try parsing it. Well, because Wednesday is all lowercase, it turns out that the default behavior for try parse is to expect proper casing. And that means that it did not parse properly, which we can see by this false right here. But what is interesting is that the default value of the enum is Monday. There's no other placeholder like null or none for this enum, so the result is that it's going to get set to something in that enum. And that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're using triparse, is that you really do want to look at the return state, because if it was false and then you went ahead and used that output, you would be saying that your Wednesday, all lowercase, is okay to be parsed to Monday. And that's totally not accurate. So please ensure that you're looking at the return value of that method, because that's gonna tell you whether or not you can actually consume this result variable. The next two flavors that we looked at involve specifying whether or not we should ignore the casing. So for the first one, we said, let's go ahead and ignore the case. And then we passed in an all lowercase Tuesday. And that parsing does succeed because we see a true here. And as we can see on the left part, we do have a proper Tuesday coming back as that enum value. Now, similarly, but also conversely, we did say that ignore case for the last one would be false. And then we passed in an uppercase F on Friday, and that's gonna give us this expected casing for the enum value. So that does parse successfully as we might expect. So we did not have to ignore the case for that one because the input was in the proper format. And that's gonna wrap up our super quick look at how we can go from strings to enum types in C Sharp. It's important to keep in mind that we cannot just do a cast from a string to the enum type. So that doesn't work, even though it does work for integer variations. But so far in this series, we've only been looking at really basic enum types. What else can we do with enums? And furthermore, are we using enums properly? What are the situations where we should not be using enums? So stay tuned for the next video where we'll jump into something called flags for enums, and you can go ahead and watch that right here. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.